Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about an event audit table in the context of DynamoDB. Audit tables are extremely useful for keeping track of your stateful objects as they change over time. So in this video, I want to discuss with you what an audit table is and why it's useful. And then in the second part of this video series, we're going to create some infrastructure in AWS to help you set up your audit table using DynamoDB. So let's jump into what an audit table is using a practical example. So in this example, we have an orders table and you can imagine that our orders table consists of, you know, obviously orders and these orders are stateful objects. Maybe they go through certain transitions over time. Maybe their state is initially open when the order is placed. Maybe they get picked up. So their state changes to picked up and then finally maybe completed or closed in the terminal state. So these are what are called stateful objects and they go through these distinct changes over time. So from a debugging perspective, it's very important to keep track of them. So let's pretend we're interested in a particular order and the state transitions that it goes through over time. So this one has three different transitions and initially the order looks a little bit something like this. So we have an order ID, a state which is open, we have a payment type which is cash, and then finally we have the last updated date. So this is the initial state when the order is originally placed. A little while later, a update happens to this particular order and something changes inside of it. And I'll give you a second here to try and figure out what the difference is between these two things. But let me just help you out really quick. We can see that the payment type changed from cash to visa. That's fine. Maybe the customer called in and changed their payment type. There's nothing wrong with that. And then finally, we have a third event that takes place a little bit over here. And again, if you're squinting your eyes trying to figure out what changed here, let me help you out again. We can see that it changed from open to delivered. So there's three distinct events that took place for this particular order. There was when it was opened, when the payment type changed, and then finally when it was delivered. If we were trying to debug this particular order after it was already delivered, we would have no idea of these past events. We wouldn't be able to answer the question, when was this order originally placed? When did the payment type change? All these different very reasonable questions that could matter from a debugging perspective. And so this is where the utility of an audit table comes in. We want to keep track of all the changes to this particular order over time so that we can come later and go take a look at all the different changes that this order went through. You'd be surprised at how useful this is in real life, just from a debugging perspective, but also making sure your system is working as expected. So that's what an audit table is. Now let's discuss how you can potentially build one using some AWS infrastructure. So we have a audit table here and it starts with a orders table in DynamoDB. And then we need to choose a particular data storage technology that's going to be fairly cheap and it needs to not be charging us for when we're not using it. Because if you can imagine, um, if you have an audit table, you don't need it to be highly available. You don't need it to be very highly scalable. You just need it to be reliable and you need to not be charged a lot when it's not in use. Because let's be real, you're only gonna be using this once in a while. So for that, I selected Amazon Athena here, and that's where we're going to be storing our orders audit table. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Athena, it can read off of data that exists in S3. So in this particular example, from the data that exists in our DynamoDB table, we would be putting that data into S3 and then connecting Athena to that S3 bucket so that we can perform queries on it. And in order to make this happen, we want to take advantage of DynamoDB streams and add a trigger so that when any updates occur on our DynamoDB table, that's automatic automatically replicated into S3 and therefore into Athena. Now from there, once you have all that set up, you as a user would come along and then you, you know, you perform your inserts and updates, or maybe you have some kind of backend that's doing this for you, I would hope. And then afterwards, maybe there's some kind of escalation. You need to deep dive into a particular order for a debugging purpose. So from there, you interact with Amazon Athena. You submit your very familiar SQL query for all events where order ID is the particular order that you're interested in. And then finally, the output is a very nice and convenient data table that consists of all the events that took place against this order ID over time, making it very, very easy for you to debug when and what happened in this order's life cycle. So that's it for this video. In the part two, I'm going to show you how to set up all of this in AWS. So stay tuned for that. I'll put that in the description section below when it is available. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.